hey, fun science video for you. Check it out, we got a lava lamp here. By the way, I think it's interesting about lava lamps. They're just awesome. I've always liked them since I was a kid. One of my aunts and uncles had one in their house and I've always loved them. But I'm gonna let you kind of watch this lava lamp for a second, but there's two motions happening in it. I'm gonna go turn on the lights in a second here. But when I go to turn on the lights, I'm just gonna let the film go for a second. And I want you to just kind of watch the two motions that are occurring. All right, so I'm back. So are you able to see it? So first of all, there's two motions going on here. One is we've got down here, we got this wax that's down here and below here in this white, there's actually a, a, a lamp, like a light bulb. And it's a really high heat light bulb. And what it's doing is it's actually, the heat from the lamp is going into the wax. And so is that an endothermic process or an exothermic process? So if we think about it, the light is going into the wax. So that's endothermic, it's going into the wax. But when it goes into the wax, the wax, which is moving, it starts to move faster and farther apart. And as those particles are moving farther apart, it's becoming less dense. So the wax down here is going up. But by the time it gets up here to the top, it starts to cool back down. And so the particles which were further apart, taking up a bigger volume, People, the particles that were further apart that are taking up a bigger volume are now moving closer together and they're closer together, so they're smaller volume. So these, this is the wax becomes more dense and it starts to sink. And so that's why we got both a rising and a sinking going on. So let's apply this to our life and let's think about water for a second. So in water, if we think about water for a second, gotta grab something, sorry about that. Water is also able to absorb heat. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something kind of fun, real quick. If we think about this, we think about water for a second. If we got a warm day and the water starts to heat up, well, the water, when it heats up, it's gonna start moving faster and further apart and water is sticky or it's polar. And so that means it kind of sticks to itself. So the water has to get a lot of energy to be able to escape and to go to water vapor, all right? But it would be easier for the water to go to vapor if there was less pressure. So remember that, less pressure would make it easier. But also think about this, if you have a lot of warm water heated up on a warm day, there's gonna be more water vapor rising because it's gonna be just like this, it's gonna be getting less dense and so it's gonna be going up. And as it's going up, you down here on the earth, if a bunch of air is leaving you, you are under a lower pressure. So I'm gonna prove that clouds form on a low pressure day by using this in just a second. But as the water vapor goes up, well, you might know from hiking or doing other things that when you hike or climb, the higher you go on a mountain, the cooler it gets. And so as the water vapor goes up, it cools down, if the water vapor has something to condense on, you'll get a cloud. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prove that with this container right here. But in order for me to prove this, I, I'm gonna use a little teeny bit of water. I've been doing this all day in this container, so I've got a few of these down here. But I just got some water down here, and I'm gonna put a tiny, tiny bit of smoke in the bottle. Tiny, tiny bit of smoke. So gotta let this burn a little bit. And I'm gonna put that down in there and I put a little teeny, teeny bit of smoke in there. So much, so little, in fact, that you can't really even see the smoke. But I've got enough in there now that I can have something for the water vapor I'm gonna to make to form on a cloud. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is gonna be really cool. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze this bottle. And when I squeeze this bottle, I'm gonna put the bottle under high pressure. Okay, so I'm not adding any heat to this at all. When I put it under high pressure and then I release it, there's less pressure on this liquid water. And so even though I'm not using any heat, the water's gonna have enough movement that it's gonna be able to escape the water and turn into water vapor. Because I put smoke in there, the water vapor will have something to quickly condense on. And when it condenses, you're gonna get a cloud in the bottle. 
I love it when the, the bell interrupts me on these end of the day things. But anyway, so here we go. It takes me a couple of squeezes to make it happen, but here we go. All right. Clear day, high pressure, cloudy. Clear, cloudy. <laughs> Clear, cloudy. Clear, cloudy. So here's how you remember it. Are you ready? This is how you remember it. On a high pressure day, it's going to be clear, no clouds in the sky. Low pressure, you're going to have clouds and you're going to get storms. Why? Because in a normal atmosphere situation, the only way you get clouds forming is when a bunch of vapor is heated up and it's rising because it's less dense. You get clouds and those clouds start to fill. If a lot of moist air is rising fast, you get a storm. But in this bottle, clear, clear, cloudy. Have a great day. Science is awesome.